This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president and CEO of Aguila American Gold, Mr. Mark Saxon. Mark, this time around, we usually are at the New Orleans Investment Conference kicking the tires on new ideas. I'm meeting with subscribers. This year, of course, the conference has gone virtual. So consider this the virtual kick in the tires on Aguila American Gold. How are you, Mark? Hey, Gerardo. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for the virtual kick. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, everything's online this year. And, and we really, uh, yeah, I'd love to be there face to face and, and meeting uh, current and, and potential shareholders. But we do the best we can, don't we? Well, let's get to it. Let let me be transparent as I am with everything I do. I am biased. Um, Aguila American Gold is a company I recently helped or participated in a financing for. I helped raise some capital for it privately myself. I wrote a check. And so I obviously like the team, like the past success. Let's get right to it and talk about the team at Aguila American Gold. And then we can talk project and what to expect because I think the news is going to be fast and furious here the rest of the year. For sure. And, and yeah, thank you for the great introduction, Gerardo. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the disclaimer. And, I'm, and obviously, I'm a fairly substantial shareholder myself. So we we trade on the uh, on the TSX Venture Exchange code of uh, AGL, um, which the code has been there for quite a long time. So Aguilar, I guess, is the, the highest level history. Um, it's been sitting there as a shell uh, for a while and uh, the company was getting restructured and and I guess we saw a great opportunity to um, yeah to put the, the company back to work again. So We've just raised some money, so uh, yeah, about 2.6 million US that you took part in, and uh, and that's given us a great runway uh, runway to uh, to get stuck into the projects that we're we're looking at at the moment. So um, uh, the flagship project and the and the lead out one is a project um, that we call WUSA, WSA, which uh, yeah, not the most elegant of names, but uh, it's in in Southern Oregon and uh, it's the place we'll be focused on first. So. We've got a, a team of, uh, of people I know very well. So it's my myself, um, a, a good friend and, and long-term associate, Blair Way, who's on the board, um, CFO of Nick DeMere, and uh, and then we're building a team uh, in the US as well. Obviously, with travel restrictions at the moment, we have to, to build a local team. And, uh, and so that's coming out of Reno, Nevada for us. You've managed to put together, along with the team, over several years, a district-scale land package that hasn't been explored for over 150 years, not at least the way that your team and your group is accustomed to exploring. That's incredibly exciting to me at a time where I think we are in a new era of discovery and exploration, and frankly, a cycle where the mid-tiers and the majors are going to start to have to beg for district-scale land packages that can and yield the type of discoveries that they need to replenish their reserves. Tell me a bit about the strategy moving forward. You just raised the money. You alluded to that. What are you going to do with it? Yeah, absolutely, Gerardo. And really, yeah, like you say, it's a, it's a district scale package. And, and in a uh, in a well-explored country like the US is or Canada or Australia, it, it's incredibly difficult to get this kind of land holding. And uh, most things have been divided up and explored and, and have had uh, people there before us. But um, but the landholding system in the U.S. and, and in Oregon is um, is a little different to some places in that the surface rights and the mineral rights were both given together to the landholder. And so that happened yeah, like more than 150 years ago, as you said. So this land has been with the one company, with the one landholder for at least 150 years since mm. it was first allocated. So we know that the mineral rights and the surface rights have been attached since that time. So the surface landholder knows exactly what's been done on the land in terms of mineral exploration, and that is almost nothing. So there really has been no one there doing drilling, exploration, discovery um, for 150 years. So literally, I can yeah, I can count on on just a little over two hands uh, the number of drill holes that have been done on this massive patch of ground. So. There were 10 holes drilled in the in the late in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, there were three holes drilled um, in uh, 2018 by our joint venture partner, and that's it. There's nothing else. And so, we have access um, to a very large area, which is um, 150 hec- 150,000 hectares in total. Hmm. Within that 150,000 hectares, the landholder that we're working with owns about half of that, about 70,000 hectares. And then as we do our work and, and generate projects, we're able to cut part of that ground into what we're calling option agreements, 
and then the option agreement sort of gives us the right to sort of do ground disturbing work, drilling and, and get extra work done. So we're moving through that process. So we've got the regional discovery area and then we've got some focus targets as well sitting within that. And, uh, and yeah, we'll be pushing all those forward, well, literally from now, I suppose. And we've got, uh, yeah, pr- uh, preparations underway for, uh, for work listing. You mentioned the size of the land package and you mentioned the lack of modern exploration there, but the project and the site lies, I believe, adjacent to a 19th century gold rush area, right? Where a lot of small scale miners continue to be active. So you're in the right address, right? Absolutely. And so, uh, yeah, that that area is called uh, Bohemia. And so Bohemia is, yeah, think, I guess, of um, the Californian gold rush era. Bohemia was uh, was uh, a distant part of that, and so there was uh, activity going on in the creeks and the streams, looking for alluvial gold at the same time, and then they found the hard rock gold nearby. So, in fact, even today, there's people out there making yeah tough livings from um, doing alluvial mining in the creeks, including some of those people working on alluvial claims, uh, plastic claims, on the land that uh, that we have to explore as well. The plastic claim can sit within the um, as surface rights within the areas that we're working. So, um, yeah, there's no doubt that there's gold in the region and, and we've got uh, gold in drill holes from the, the few bits of work that have been done in the past. And uh, so, yeah, we've got lots of good places. You have a deep network of contacts. Do, do you plan, does Aguila plan on making this the sole focus moving forward or are you looking for other attractive projects and looking to leverage that network that you've developed over decades in the business? Yeah, we yeah, as you say, we've got a great network, and uh, yeah, and, and you know many of those people that we work with, and and uh, and that's really giving us uh, a good overview on on lots of deal flow, I suppose. And mm-hmm. so, at the moment, there's lots of projects out there looking for for homes and ideas, and and for well-funded companies. And yeah, I, I see us as one of those companies. We're able to build up a um, yeah a really strong portfolio, I believe, over the next sort of six months. And uh, yeah, and that's really the focus of the company is uh, we've got the money, we've got the people and and, uh, and and get the deal flow of projects. And so that's happening right now. I guess we're focused uh, particularly on gold. We're focused uh, particularly on, on good, safe jurisdictions where we can make uh, real progress quickly, get drill rigs turning and, and uh, get work done. So um, yeah, that would be obviously, yeah, the US is a, is a great one for that. Um, particularly in the current environment where the gold price is. Um, yeah, parts of Canada are great. Parts of Australia are good, and, and but yeah, I can make a long list of, of places that we're interested in. You mentioned drilling. Um, everyone always wants to know how soon do you plan on getting a drill into the ground to see what Mother Nature left for you? Uh, yeah, so obviously we're, we're getting that done as quickly as possible. We, um, yeah, as I said, the project's in Oregon, so there were a few very small delays due to the fires and things, and we're respecting, uh, obviously, the, the impact that's had, and and making sure the landholder has, uh, yeah, has things worked out properly um, on, on the surface land, but um, yeah, it's very soon, Gerardo, and um, yeah, so uh, we can be counting, um, yeah, in, in weeks, not months. Excellent. That's uh, that's music to my ears. As you know, we write checks to see what Mother Nature left behind, not for anomalies and all of the other things that tend to be more technical in nature. And I know that me as a non-geologist, I don't have the deep, deep appreciation that geologists have for, you know, the trends and the structures and the anomalies and everything that goes into defining a drill target. But man, do I love seeing a drill turning and seeing what's there. Yeah. And, and it's a bit of both, I suppose. And, and we always <laughs> need a story with the, uh... Yeah, with surface sampling and, and understanding, yeah, the rocks and the alteration, and uh, and so this site, it's uh, yeah, we're, we're looking for um, yeah, for epithermal deposits. So there's great indications here of low sulfidation epithermal deposits, which again, a little a little technical perhaps, but we're seeing gold associated with uh, yeah, with tellurium and mercury and arsenic and the things that are always associated in those deposits and the styles of alteration that we need to be seeing. So. They're, they're big ticks from yeah from our side of the fence and and uh, yeah we're very hopeful that we can turn that into into a good gold deposit from your side of the fence so um, yeah I'm sure we can do both. Four prospect areas identified to date is that correct? Uh, that's correct and and really yeah that's based on on very preliminary work so we're we're pleased the, the way that's come through and and really the the target to start with is is a project called uh, Scorpion Cinnabar. And uh, that, that hasn't had a great deal of work yet. It's had, um, yeah, like I said, it's only had one drill hole really in its history and, and some surface work. Um, in soil sampling, we've got um, uh, soils with uh, more than uh, one gram per tonne of gold in the soil sampling, which is quite exceptional. So the job now is to, uh, to test underneath those high-grade soils 
and to see what could be there. And um, yeah, that's a exciting place to be in. Mark, I want to thank you for your time. I'm looking forward to having you back on. I want to encourage everybody to look for Mr. Nick Hodge and myself. We are both participating all week long at the virtual New Orleans Investment Conference 2020. We'll make sure to include a link uh, to where you can find us. Mark, anything else you'd like to add? No, that's great. I hope the conference goes well, Gerardo. And um, yeah, good luck to you and your investors. And um, yeah, it's a great time to be in gold, that's for sure. Excellent. Thanks again, Mark. Thanks, Gerardo.